When Jesus was asked about what the greatest commandment was, he replied with this verse from Mark 12.30, which almost all Christians know by heart now, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. This commandment calls us to love God in all the entirety of our being, to be devoted to Him and Him alone, emotions, feelings, logic, and all. Someone may ask, why do we have to love God? This question has several responses, depending on the individual answering. Some might say because He is God, others might say because He sent His Son to die for us. However, the first and foremost reason we should love God is captured in 1 John 4, 19. We love Him because He first loved us. Not only did He give His Son to die for our sins, but in spite of our shortcomings and flaws, He first loved us. But this begs the question, how do we love God? How do we show our love to Him in a world which doesn't see loving God as anything? Luckily, the Bible, which has the instructions we need to live our life in a way acceptable to God, has the answer. Here are five ways the Bible shows us to love God. Before we continue, please hit the notification bell and subscribe to stay updated on our videos. Number one. And David and all the house of Israel were celebrating before the Lord with songs and lyres and harps and tambourines and castanets and cymbals. 2 Samuel 6, 5. In the Bible, one man and one man alone was called a man after my own heart by God. It wasn't Abraham, even though he lived his life obeying God's decrees. It wasn't Moses, neither was it Aaron or Isaiah. It was David. Though David is famous for his remarkable ascent to the throne and his defeat of the giant Goliath, what really makes David stand out is the energy he put into praising God. At every point in his life, David made it his priority to worship and praise the Lord. Even the book of Psalms, which was largely written by David, is filled with passages praising and glorifying God. David understood that just as we humans have love languages, God does too, and one of them was through praising and worshipping Him. Psalm 95, 1-3 says, O come, let us sing to the Lord, let us make a joyful noise to Him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. We should not only say we love God, but we should also express our love through words of adoration. We should love God by telling Him how much more He means to us. We should love God by telling Him we appreciate how much He has done for us, in spite of our unfaithfulness. As Hebrews 13.15 tells us that we should continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God, praising God is required of us, so why not do it as an act of love for our God? Number 2. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. John 14.15 One way to love God is to obey His commandments, demonstrating our faithfulness and trust in Him. What better way to love God than obeying Him? If you love someone, you respect them, and that respect will make you want to obey them. 1 John 5, 3 illustrates this point when it says, Loving God means keeping His commandments. If we love God, we should be able to follow His commandments, even in moments when we find it hard. We have to remember that He loved us first, so His commandments are always for our good. Jesus tells us in John 15, 10 that if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. As Samuel told King Saul, obedience in the sight of God is better than sacrifice. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him, but whoever keeps his word in him truly, the love of God is perfected. 1 John 2, 4 to 5. Number three, the Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. Psalm 145.18. Prayer can be defined as the act of talking to God. When you love someone, you delight in speaking with them. Not a day goes by without you excitedly reaching out to have a conversation with the person. Likewise, that is how we are to love God, by speaking with Him. The more we talk to God, the more we are assured of His love, and the more we grow to love Him. 
The value of prayer in a believer's relationship with God cannot be overemphasized. It encourages us to rely on Him, express our love and trust, and maintain a continuous connection with Him. Like James 5.13 says, Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Number four, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Hebrews 11.1 1. To love God compels us to trust Him and know that He always means well for us even when we cannot see Him. Proverbs 3.5-6 asks us to Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will make straight your paths. When a child is thrown up by her father, she doesn't shake with fear. Rather, because she knows her father loves her, she trusts that he will be there to catch her. That is how our relationship with God should be. If we claim to love him, we should be able to show our love through trusting him with all our heart. Psalms 37.5 tells us to commit our way to the Lord and trust in him with the absolute belief that he will act. That is a way of loving God absolute trusts like the patriarchs in the Old Testament. To walk with God is to agree to trust Him with all your heart. And as Amos asked us in Amos 3.3, can two walk together unless they agree? Number five, if anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. 1 John 4.20 When Jesus was asked by a Pharisee to identify the greatest commandment in the law, Jesus responds, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. However, he doesn't just stop there. He continues with, And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus first emphasized that loving God is the greatest commandment. However, he immediately follows it with the commandment to love our neighbors as ourselves. By putting these two commands together, Jesus makes it clear that our love for God cannot be complete without love for others. In 1 John 4-7, John discusses the importance of love and its connection to God. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God. The last sentence begs another question. If anyone who does not love does not know God, and unless you know God, you cannot love him, how then can you hate others and say you love God? John teaches us that love comes from God and that God himself is love. Therefore, anyone who claims to know God must also love others. Loving others is a direct expression of loving God. To truly love God, we must also love our neighbors, treat them with kindness and generosity, as well as compassion. By doing so, we reflect God's love in the world and honor Him. These five ways the Bible shows us to love God are a holistic approach to our relationship with Him. Through obedience, worship, prayer, trust and love for others, we can grow closer to God, love Him more and live a life that honors Him. In turn, this leads to a deeper and more meaningful relationship with our Creator. If you found this video impactful, share it with a friend. Subscribe to No Limits Faith for more.